Well, hello and good day. My name is Chris Young, and I am the Senior Product Manager for the Microsoft Pebblestone Fashion Solution. Today I'm going to be showing you some functionality that is specific for fashion companies. We're going to cover in the Navision Solution basic navigation. We're going to take a look at how you get access to data, how you navigate through the software to look up your customers, your inventory, your production schedules, things along those lines. We're going to take a look at inventory management and the extremely powerful Microsoft matrix for accessing inventory and looking on one screen at various styles, sizes, colors, and components that are critical to anyone in the fashion industry. We're going to take a look at traffic and the traffic module where we can access and analyze the planned logistics schedule for vessel and container tracking. We're going to take a look at the advanced forecasting functionalities that don't simply utilize a min, max, and reorder point, but consider the types of customers and the specific products that they've purchased in the past and new customers that have joined and are classified in similar categories to project your inventory requirements and then send that information to purchase requisitions or to a production system. We're going to take a look at the robust sales order entry and sales order processing engine and how we can do functions that support EDI and that support inventory order promising and calculation of when you'd be able to deliver. We're going to look at projected orders and blanket orders, consignment orders, replacement orders. We're going to look at customer credit information. We're going to look at integrated shipping associated with the order engine and how I can calculate freight values right in the beginning when an order is processed. We're then going to look at customer relationship management that is built into this solution where we can manage our contacts and take a look at all of the information related to the interactions with those contacts. We're going to look at opportunity management and campaigns, uh, how I can target segments and send email blasts or automated faxes directly out of the system for upselling or cross-selling opportunities. We're going to take a look at the robust Microsoft Office integration and how I can generate reports in Microsoft Word or feed data directly to Excel or Microsoft Outlook. We're also going to take a look at the business alert and notification engine that's built into the software that can alert me to situations that were rising in my business before it's too late to address them, alerting me when inventory falls below certain stocking levels or when a purchase order is late and there are hundreds of alerts that any business can benefit from. We're going to take a look at the reporting tool Jet Reports, which pulls data in real time from your Navision solution and pu publishes that data to Excel so that it can be saved as a static Excel view or re-updated in real time by any user. We're then going to take a look and discuss the web integration components and how the Microsoft Dynamics solution has the ability to publish data to a variety of web portals, including SharePoint. So let's get started with basic navigation. The basic navigation utilities you will notice have a familiar Microsoft look and feel. We're going to analyze cards and list views, which are two ways to take a look at data and examine data in the system. We're going to do some OLAP. OLAP is Online Analytical Processing where we're going to sort some data, we're going to filter some data. I'm then going to show the powerful drill down capabilities and lookup capabilities and sum that up with navigation, which is really drilling across, finding every related transaction. So we're going to call up our Navision system. And when we're looking at this main menu structure, you'll notice that this look with menu items followed by folders followed by individual selections are very similar to the look if I change into another product like Outlook. And you'll notice that in Outlook I have 
basically an identical structure of folder groups and individual items and menu items. So anyone that knows how to utilize the Microsoft Outlook application or any Microsoft tool really will be very quick to learn how to navigate the Microsoft Dynamics solution. When we take a look at the menus, just to go through them briefly, you'll see the financial management menu where I have my general ledger, my cash management, receivables where I process things like my customers and their credit management and process cash receipts. My payables folder where I can manage my vendors, fixed assets and inventory. When I take a look at sales and marketing, you'll see sales, order processing, marketing, inventory and pricing, my analysis functional areas related to sales and marketing. Shipping and receiving is integrated shipping where I can process bills of lading, UCC 128 labels, advanced shipping notices, receiving where I can go through receive line scanning and scan items as they are offloaded from containers, and automated email engines for transmitting emails related to shipments that have been sent out to my customers or to my sales reps or to my brokers. Purchasing, where I can go through purchase planning and manage requisitions and purchases. Order processing, where I manage my purchase orders, uh, receipts of goods, blanket POs, returns to vendor, letters of credit, reverse auctions, business notifications related to purchasing. Warehouse management is where I would go to process Navision's built-in robust warehouse management functionality, which is not limited to the functionalities of, where, of directed putaways, directed picking, automated data capture systems, which is radio frequency handheld integration. So whether you have your own warehouse or you use third-party logistics corporations to manage your inventories, Navision can do it all in terms of managing warehouses and bins and zones and picking and putaways. Navision has its own built-in manufacturing functionality, which includes product designing, capacity management and scheduling, planning, execution, costing, and traffic for people that use production facilities that are outsourced but have to manage the transfer of product back and forth as well as uh, managing a timeline for when production is promised to be delivered. Resource planning, which is a job costing engine, very useful for product design and PDM. Human resources, where I can store information about my employees. EDI, and Navision has robust EDI that manages all of the EDI transactions, understanding raw EDI data files. This means you don't need a third-party translator and a map outside of your ERP system. ERP meaning Enterprise Resource Planning. The purpose of an ERP system is that it manages your entire operation. As you can see from the menu functions that exist in the product, Navision supports a diverse variety and basically everything that you would need for a business system. Navision incorporates the robust Pebblestone fashion vertical functionality which includes some more specifically targeted functions, uh, buying groups, there are specific manufacturing functions related to the fashion industry, remote sales functionality for remote accessing salespeople to run an offline version of Navision and synchronize their work when they get to any internet connection, letters of credit, vendor ratings, consignment functionality, traffic, box logistics, so when we take a look at the, let's just go into an individual menu and let's go to sales and marketing, sales, and let's choose the menu item customers. This is an example of a customer card. Customer card has data sorted onto multiple tabs. You'll notice on our general tab, we have a number, the name, address, city, state, zip. I have information related to searching for this customer. Uh, their search name or search code, the balance of this customer. Another way to look at data besides a card view which has data sorted onto multiple tabs of information. Payment information is on the payments tab. Shipping information is on the shipments tab. If I take a look at a list by clicking on the list function, this is a list and a list view 
is another way to access the same type of data. I can rearrange the columns and rearrange the way information is displayed. I can use the view show or hide column functions to show other fields. Maybe I want the zip code and I want the country code and I can scroll down and basically display any field on that table on each screen. When accessing a list, I can do things like set filters. Filters is online analytical processing. Maybe I only want customers where the contact is, is has the name Brown somewhere in their name. So I will set a filter and I will choose a filter button and I will say start with anything using the asterisk Brown end with anything and it finds that Jeremy Brown actually works for uh, four customers uh, that are set up in my system and I can see the names of those Canon Fashion Stores, ABC Retailer, XYZ and here is a duplicate customer record and you can see my customer numbers that are established you can establish multiple filters as an example I'll just clear the filter and bring up all of my data again let's look for only customers that are shipped or fulfilled from my blue warehouse so I'll just set a filter on that list and now perhaps I only want the customers that are from the blue location that are sold by salesperson JR so I'll go ahead and I'm gonna do a another filter and I'm gonna say salesperson JR and I'll push OK and now I have multiple filters the system is telling me I have filters established for my list and if I look what filters are set and I have salesperson JR blue location that's just an example of the way you can filter and this type of filtering can be done everywhere in the system whether you're looking for customers that purchased a certain product from you or perhaps customers with high profit margins or low profit or reductions in sales so that you can be aware of these types of information without running reports and getting out your highlighter pen make it very fast to access data in the system you can change the way the screens are sorted currently if I take a look at my list I'll just go up to the top of my list here they're sorted by account number maybe I want the list sorted and I'll use the sort icon by name and now they're sorted by name instead of by number that's user by user you can rearrange your screens and rearrange the data that's displayed to make it very effective to uh, utilize the system it makes it user friendly because people only need to see the data they work with every day and can rearrange their forms without affecting any other users now when I take a look at the customer card again I'm going to illustrate this balance field Navision is bucket list technology the information that is stored on screens in numbers can typically be drilled down into and it is made up of the real balances that were published for that field so when I look at what makes up the $823.98 balance for Canon fashion stores you'll notice that that is made up it is the remaining amount of two transactions two invoices that are in their system and you'll see here there was one that was sales order number 3118 well I wish I knew what was on that transaction what products were shipped what GL accounts were posted to maybe the tracking information related to that well how can I get there well the navigate button is the drill across functionality in division and when you push navigate and whether you key in a number or click on a transaction or put in a, a customer purchase order number or something along those lines it will illustrate for you all of the related transactions that match that source data in this case it's searching for a posted sales invoice for customer 10,000 that happened to have invoice number 3005 and there was one posted sales invoice 25 journal entries two tax entries one customer ledger entry that's how we got here five value entries which are the records of the inventory items that were shipped out and it's probably multiple layers of product and it will illustrate back to each individual layer costing layer of product that was dis distributed well let's look at the invoice so if I click on drill into the invoice 
the system shows me that this invoice was for 33 pieces of TS42. I can see my average price for those items was $8.76 and it's an average price because different sizes or colors may have different prices. I can also see that there was $11.16 of UPS charge. The totals are accessible uh, using the statistics function which illustrates for me the total value, the total tax and the amount including tax, the revenue, the cost, the profit margin in dollars and percentage. I can take a look at the line items specifically by accessing the matrix view to display for me what products were shipped out and I can see on that invoice the actual quantity shipped for each of these items, how many uh, based on unit of measure were black, mediums, extra extra small, extra small, uh, and how many XLs and how many double XLs were shipped out that make up the to overall products that were shipped out. And I can look at quantity, I can look at unit price to see what were the prices of those products and you can see some were shipped at $8.95, some were shipped at $8.45 because different sizes and or colors have different price structures. In this case it's just based on size. I can go ahead and perhaps I want to print an example of that. Here's a copy, just a rough example of the default layout of this report where I can see my units, my unit prices that were shipped out and my totals. If I wanted to from the preview screen I can save this as an HTML file, I can send this as an email document you can send these and it will format as HTML and send that out. I can generate and send this as a form right to Word, Excel, or to another program, an ex any external program that you map in. Also this notice was shipped UPS. If I look at the invoice packages, you'll see that there's a package here. This was shipped in one package, package number 13. Here's my UPS tracking number and I can use functions track to go out and find out if this was delivered what was in that box and for anyone that has to generate uh, ASNs the all important information is stored here what individual items were packed in that package and you can see here the 33 units that were shipped out the weight the value for that product the shipping charge the shipping cost and you can see I'm marking up shipping and all of this information is accessible for every user of the system that has permission to read that data which means anyone that has to provide customer service information can navigate through Navision from anywhere to get to the information they need. So we're going to take a look at the inventory management functionality and we're going to go through an item card where the information about the master records are stored information on inventory items and models and colors and sizes and things we're going to look at stock keeping unit cross references and barcoding. We're going to look at an inventory item matrix and we're going to look at variant status. Is an item in pre-production? Is it in design mode? Is it available to ship? Is it blocked from further distribution? Is it on closeout? Various components related to sizes and colors that might not be available. Assortments, prepacks, units of measure, we're going to take a look at product data management and talk about product life cycle management and we're going to take a look at pricing and discount structures and how they were accommodated in the Microsoft Pebblestone fashion solution. So if we come to sales, inventory and pricing and I call up an item, this is an example of an inventory item card. You'll notice that this item card has an item number, it's got a description base unit of measure and if I do a look up here I can establish alternate units of measure as well as standard packs so that when packing product or when customers place orders for products I can establish their unique units of measure and their unique identifiers. I can take a look and overall I have a negative available uh, I've actually shipped negative on this uh, minus 57 units. Uh, quantity on purchase order I don't have because I make this and I have 275 pieces on production order. I have none on component lines because this is the finished good. I would see component quantities on the zipper, the cloth, 
the other components that I would use in production. Even if they are sitting at a maker, I would still track those raw materials, or I still could track those raw materials. The quantity on sales order associated with this and what's the demand, and I can see it has an item category and a product group code. There are many tabs relating to items. I have various costing methods that are supported, FIFO, LIFO, specific, average cost, standard cost. Indirect cost percentages can be used to indicate landing factors, import duties, tariffs, those things. My replenishment tab, I can establish here what is my replenishment method. Do I purchase or produce this product? And what are my requisition methods? Make to order, lot for lot, make to stock, purchase, combine orders to maximum order quantities, I transfer, I batch several periods. How do I manage these products? Who is the default source of supply for this item? And I would look at the vendor number associated with that and the vendor's part number. And what's the unit of measure and default lead time calculation? If I produce a product, I'll have a routing established with the process for production and the production bill of material, which is the components list associated with product data management. From a planning perspective, what's my reorder cycle every three weeks, safety lead times and safety stock quantities, that publish information to my requisition system. Foreign trade, where I can establish tariffs, country of origins. Item tracking is where I establish lot, role, lot control rules. The e-commerce tab is where I establish and link my commerce portal information, like pictures, catalog classes, and common item numbers for my Microsoft BizTalk. From a warehousing perspective, if this is a product I'm managing, I can indicate if special equipment is required what are my put-away templates? This is how the system directs picking and directs put-away of product. If I am processing cycle counting, what's the last count period, the next count period, the identifier code for this product? On my fashion tab, I establish data related to this product, such as what model group is it in? Model groups are very important, and I'll illustrate those more clearly when I get to sales order processing. But you can group a series of styles together into a model code so that when entering an order and choosing a model, all styles can be displayed on a single screen and you can place orders for all of those at one time. A color group is how I establish one of the components of the matrix. And here I've got LJ, leather jacket, this code, and the colors black, blue, and brown related with a sorting sequence. Is there a new price structure and what's the rise percentage? and there, there is none for those, versus size groups. And if I look at sizes, leather jacket, and I look at the components associated, you'll see that I have small, medium, large, and extra large. How are they sorted so that they don't have to be coded in a way that they will sort in the, the alphabetical sorting? So if I look at like a t-shirt, for example, and I look at those, you'll see that I have a new price structure. And when I get to uh, the size large that the system will establish a new price and automatically do a 10% markup and I actually even have various rounding rules uh, 99 cents says round up to precision to the nearest penny so we have a collection group the collection group can be utilized in commission calculations and pricing calculations what season are these products targeted for is there a theme a brand a company statistics for initial an additional sales analysis and reporting and filtering are they part of a quota category what is the item type what is the item status overall the delivery period the sell from a minimum sales order quantity so all of these parameters uh, can be constructed associated with this product what is the standard pack unit of measure standard packs for package net weight, gross weight, dimmed weight for the base unit of measure. So we have live data on the item card. If I take a look at the menus, for example, the fashion menu, we're going to start by looking at stock information. And if I take a look here, this will show me what's my quantity. And remember how I had a negative quantity on hand because I've shipped negative on this product. What is my value in the matrix? What is my vertical and horizontal component as my lines and my columns? And you'll see that I have my colors and my size is displayed associated with this product. 
if it's used in assortments, I could click here and it would show me what are the quantities in assortments, and that's the number that's displaying in parentheses. I can go ahead and say, instead of show me the value in matrix, show me my quantities on sales order. What's my uh, overall quantity sold? What's my projected available balance? And this is my projected available based on planned production and planned sales. So I can go in and access each of these. For example, there are negative 46 on the extra large brown. Show me. And I can see the projected available by day, daily, weekly, monthly. And this is called the Trendscape view. I can take a look at variant status. And a variant is the combination of colors and sizes, or styles, or designs, or whatever is appropriate for your fashion requirements. And you'll see here that I've got many of these items that are free to ship or open to sell. I have a uh, large brown that's not available yet. It's in design mode. So in design mode, we can't purchase it. We can't receive it. We are blocked from selling it. We are blocked from shipping. We are blocked from sales return. So what functions can you do? No production, free, and you can establish as many item statuses as are appropriate for you. And you'll notice that extra large blue is not an available combination as well. From a inventory item calculation or cost roll-up perspective, we can take a look at the calculations. And you can have multiple calculations constructed that have various versions of bills of material, uh, various production bombs, various routings. Maybe you are operating in a mixed mode, and sometimes you produce the product yourself. Sometimes you buy the components and have them made at one maker. Sometimes you have them produced at others. We have the ability to store various calculation rules. And if I take a look at this calculation that I've constructed, you can see when was this constructed, when was it calculated, what was the total bill of material cost, and the total routing for our overall total cost. When was the currency as of when I calculated this. And if I look at the calculation card, you'll see that it's really a cost worksheet for managing my inventory, looking at my bill of material, my labor, my subtotal, and then a markup, a freight estimate that is material times 6%, and then 1 or 10% rather of miscellaneous costs to give me a various, a $10.64 parameter to give me my total based on a lot size that I'm producing of this product and we can create multiple calculation headers associated with managing these cost roll-ups. As I scroll across, these formulas have a surcharge code, freight and miscellaneous. And if I look at this freight surcharge, you'll notice there's a GL account linked. When I receive this product in, the system can accrue, based on user configuration, freight and miscellaneous costs, and as many surcharge groups as you choose to construct and book those to the general ledger to give me more accurate costs accruals as I might not receive those freight bills for some time or it could be quite challenging to allocate the exact freight. If you have the ability to allocate the exact freight or manufacturing costs, Navision also supports item charge allocation. When I take a look at pricing, let's just go ahead and take a look at sales prices. And sales prices can be constructed. So for this item, for this customer, or a customer price group, or for all customers, or for a targeted marketing campaign, I can establish pricing rules where I can set price, the unit price, or the overall list price for any color. And you'll notice the system intelligently breaks out my columns, small through large, extra large, based on that markup and new price. And I can show all columns and put them in independently, or I can go ahead and just key them in you know, for the major pricing groups or categories. There are pricing structures such as this, and there are also sales line discount structures that are available that work in basically the same way. But here, instead of choosing an individual item, I can use item discount groups to establish quantity-based uh, discount percentages. We, I'm going to go ahead and take a list here, and I'm going to call up item TS assortment to illustrate an assortment of t-shirts. And if I look at fashion, I have assortment. I have an assortment constructed for this that 
is uh, in an assortment. There are uh, 44 units, but if I look at the assortment itself, you'll see this is my breakdown. When you purchase this assortment of t-shirts, you'll get one XXS or extra extra small uh, of each color. You'll get two extra smalls, two smalls, two mediums, two large, one XL, and one double XL for each of the colors which makes up the overall total quantity. Orders can be placed by purchasing a standard assortment. In this case, TS100-001 will have a cross-reference or its own UPC code or unique ID. We have the ability to establish pre-packs and establish and analyze the pre-pack availability. We have a position rule that we use to establish our individual inventory positions for assembling items on cards uh, or when ticketing going to go in and take a look at product data management and in product data management we have uh, this is an example of a product data management inventory item base for individual item PDM002 and you'll see I have my all of my rules or parameters associated with this product from their model the item category their product group this is used as a source to go through and establish my design make changes and then perhaps restore my design. Rules like minimum production quantities, search descriptions. Uh, I can store pictures and import and then scroll through those pictures for production of position of collection books as well as my instruction sheet and position specification reports. If I change this, for example, let's say that the temperature here, I'm going to change this to 40. You'll see how my image changes. Tumble dry. I'll say no as an example and let's go ahead and print and let's just print an instruction sheet and we'll preview that and it's just an example of this report wash and care instructions packing information extra info my color specifications with pan tones all of the product data management functionality is built into the system this is my inventory matrix that illustrates my availability and I can manage all of the items that are associated with the item base rule or PDM base for all of the items and then do mass updates across them as I make design decisions or major changes using uh, product lifecycle management to manage the timeline for production the basic project plan I can make design changes and update that plan through Microsoft Dynamics The traffic module gives us the capability to do voyage or vessel and container tracking, to examine the project logistics timeline, looking at milestones. Real-time links and triggers exist within the traffic module to examine the link to a quantity of an item and how it's related to a production order, to purchase orders, to transfer orders, and of course to our sales orders. So let's take a look at that. And if I go into purchase and I call up my traffic module and the traffic menu item, this is an example of a traffic header that has for me the timeline for a standard uh, transaction. I have various traffic actions that exist in the system that I've constructed. Confirm my order and I have one week time. So I'm going to do that in the week of the, of the 11th through the 18th. And then I'm going to go through and process production. It's going to take 40 days to produce. Then to Singapore Harbor. Then to load the ship. Sailing time. Then unloading or offloading container. Transport to my warehouse. And then warehouse handling time. And for each of these, if I go ahead and manipulate a handling time or duration the ending date on this project plan will go ahead and, and move for me if I do a list and call up my list I can access data fields like the container the vessel the vendor number that is the maker if it's blocked and the overall timeline associated with this traffic card you can see that the components here are linked to a production order line and to a sales line and the entire quantity is on production order that I've constructed that I'm managing at an outsourced production facility and the sales line and if I drill down and take a look at this I have on my production order the 231 uh, products illustrated here individually 
the black large, black medium, black small, and all of the quantities, how many have they finished so far? And these are all on a firm plan production order. And I can look at that production order itself, and I can see the various components associated with this, the overall quantity. From this production order, I can look at the components related and see all of the lining and the buttons and the zippers and the entire bills of material to produce every single product, as well as the routing associated with this project. I can see the sales lines, which items are being sold to which customers. For each of these, I can drill and see each individual. Maybe I find out that there's going to be a problem with brown medium. Uh, they had a problem with that, or all the brown or something like that. I can go ahead and establish filters that say, just show me all the customers that were going to get brown medium. And I can see it was order 3020. Let's bring up that order, and I can see they were going to get some, Canon Fashion Stores, and 3023, and I can call up that order, line show document, and Wilger Young Fashions, and I can get in touch with those customers before it's too late, and advise them based on this link, where I have all of the information related to this transaction. How does it know which orders and which production orders, as well as which transfer orders are tied, each of those documents has a place to store the traffic information. And the only thing I'm linking here is check my purchase document. And these are where I would establish the milestones. I can indicate which lines I want to check for sales. And it's going to go through sales and tell me what's the expected shipment date by looking through my sales orders and finding the first sh shipment date to go ahead and make sure that I'm not going to be late. The forecasting engine allows me to analyze the historical activity in the system and examine the trends that have taken place. It gives me an opportunity to categorize my products and or my customers and analyze and generate projections based on those. It utilizes a regression algorithm and an average of multiple scenarios that the system processes. It incorporates a safety stock parameter and projects those quantities and then just suggests to you either purchase requisition lines for products that we would purchase or feeds a production forecast that can then be run in a master production schedule to include with the actual order demand and things uh, projected orders that are entered from your customer base. So let's take a look at the forecasting area and if I go into the fashion menu and under advanced forecasting, call up my forecast journal. I'll just make this a little bit larger. And I've run forecast. I've gone through and said calculate my forecast. And the forecast has come up with two different items that are constructed and come up with calculations with various scenarios. Scenario one, what's my quantity going to be? Scenario two and scenario three. How's it coming up with those numbers? Well, if I look at the base calculation, you'll see that the system has grouped customers that purchased products from that product type or item and gone through and categorized those customers. What was the previous period total amount? And I can drill into each of those numbers. What was the previous period amount? The customer's previous period. How many customers or hits were there that purchased that individual product from my large group? There were five customers. From my medium group, there was one. There were no purchases by small customers. And then the previous period's total. The custom, the current period amount, how many customers and how many individual customers. Were there any new customers that have been added to the system that are in the same category to come up with the total customer projection that I expect to purchase this? A regression factor, and I can establish a factor here that will assume you know, an increase or a decrease associated with the purchase, associated with the sale of this product, and then a safety stock factor based on how comfortable I am with this style. Of course, with fashion, forecasting is never an exact science, but we have to understand trends and things along those lines. But the system goes through, and based on filters that I've established, uh, it includes or excludes certain products I can look by theme, by brand, from orders that are from a specific type, and I can create as many forecasts as you might want, sorted by various components. The forecast journal is then calculated, and I can go ahead and print 
and print my test worksheet that will illustrate for me my forecast on paper in detail, I can look through each of these lines and look at it as a matrix view to determine the quantities based on each scenario that the system is assuming I will be requiring or recommending that I purchase. I can also go through and carry out the recommended action plan. And when I carry out my actions, I can choose to, based on a due date, it will push forward that far or project out that far, copy these lines to my requisition worksheet for purchasing, or feed this data to my production forecast. That will then be used and utilized in my manufacturing production schedule or master production schedule. We're now going to dive in and take a look at sales order processing. And sales order processing, we have the ability in division to transact quotes, consignment orders, blanket orders, sales orders with sell to, bill to, ship to, and ship for on each order. It's very common that if you are in the fashion industry, you may be a retail supplier and you may be processing EDI. Ship 4 is a very important component as you might be delivering your products to a distribution center with an ultimate destination uh, or subsequent destination quantities for multiple Ship 4s. Uh, Navision supports consolidated orders, subsequent destination quantities or SDQs, and uh, Ship 2s and Ship 4s that are either distribution centers or direct store door delivery. Uh, shipping date automation that will assist me in calculating my ship date and when I would be capable to deliver to a customer based on their requested delivery dates or their dates that they accept delivery or based on your capability to promise. Whether you look at available to promise, which is a calculation of what the current planned conditions are, or capable to promise, which considers how soon can I get this product in if I either make it or buy it? If you make it, the vision is powerful enough to consider the critical components required for manufacturing and push out the delivery date to the customer based on all components that are flagged as critical on an item card. The system supports rate shopping where I can calculate what will this cost to deliver based on information I pre-set up in the system. UPS, FedEx, DHL, and various shippers, as well as LTL carriers. Email notifications can be sent to send order confirmations, shipment notifications. The system also supports return orders, return replenishment orders, as well as return to vendor. So let's just go in and we'll take a look at a couple of orders. And we're going to start with a sale and we'll process a sales order. I could go through the complete starting with a quote and transferring and making that quote into an order. We will take a look at some archives in a little while when we get into CRM. But in the interest of time, let's just dive into an order. So when I go into orders, we'll create a brand new order. And I'll hit enter and the system will assign the next sequential order number based on my number series that I work in. And there can be multiple series supported. I'm going to go ahead and choose a customer. And I'm just going to choose Let's just choose, uh, I can do a look up or a search. I'll choose James Daly Sportwear. And the system's asking which ship to am I entering this for? And I'll say it's for the Coventry address. And I'm going to enter a customer purchase order number. And the header is complete. I could enter the invoicing, who am I billing this to? Perhaps this is a build to a factor. I've already entered my ship to data. Uh, foreign trade, if this was in foreign currency, Navision fully supports multiple currencies and triangulation for Euro calculations. If this came in via the web, I would have here the web information, who was the user login ID. If this came in over BizTalk as an XML document, I would have what was the date and time this was received, did I send a BizTalk confirm, uh, what's the type of order, is this a pre-sale, is it a direct sale, uh, this can play a role in commission calculations the delivery priority and this is used for calculating inventory allocation when calculating which orders will be fulfilled shipping advice per order am I shipping complete or partial what's the minimum shipping percentage that I'm allowed to deliver to this customer with is this a private label order is this part of a buying group and if so what member number the eShip tab will tell me how am I going to deliver this to this customer what shipping agent and what service is it a blind shipment 
a double blind shipment if perhaps I'm doing fulfillment on behalf of HSN. EDI, if this came in with traditional EDI and, and 850, how, what was the internal document number for this order? Did I send a functional acknowledgement? If it's being shipped via third party logistics, did I send a warehouse shipment notification, a 940 series document? What's the expected delivery date? What's the cancel after? Who's the ship for? Uh, what's their trading partner ID? So in the lines, I have a number of ways to enter an order. I'm going to enter an order by model, and I'm going to choose the, the full broke men's shoe and choose OK. Now when I enter a model and I open the model matrix, the system will go ahead and show me all of the styles that are available within this. It will have, notice this isn't just color and size, but this model matrix has various styles of shoe, various types of leather, various widths, various colors, and then sizes. And I can then choose when entering this order on the sales model matrix, I could say besides showing me my order quantities, which I'm going to key in, I want a matrix statistic available. I want to know what's on hand. And I don't have any products on hand, but what I wanted to illustrate was as I key in quantities, I'll key in here, they want 10 of this shoe. You'll notice that um, the, the information related to this could be quite useful if I knew that I had a certain quantity and that's what's inventory. What if I showed what is the projected available? And you'll notice here's one projected available zero. Well, let's put in here 10 and you'll notice my projected available is updated in real time. So immediately, this is true on anyone's computer that might be entering orders. So as I enter these quantities, when I'm done, I'll go ahead and escape. And you'll notice that I just entered all of these styles on an order. And it, it's if I now look at the matrix for these, it opens up and brings me the full model matrix once again. But I have each style broken out on its own line. Because each style, perhaps they may have different prices or things along those lines. I can go ahead and I'll just print and preview a copy of this default report layout where I can see here for the various sizes 10 of size 39 of this product, 20 of size 41, 10 of size 40. We also have the ability to, for example, check dates. And based on my planned delivery date, what are the customer's preferred delivery days? And I can establish a customer. I can make sure that it's within the sell from date for this entire order. I can go through functions to go and prepack or create parcels. I can go through order promising. And within order promising, I can calculate for this order what is the available to promise based on the on-hand conditions or calculate the capable to promise date. How soon would I be capable to deliver this to my customer? So if I put in here a date, May, um, they've requested that this will be available May 18th, 07, and I'll update my lines and under order promising, now calculate capable to promise. The system will calculate and tell me when in fact it might be capable. Uh, I need some rules established in order for the system to do this, but it will tell me if I am able to deliver or not based on what the customer is requesting. If I have a production order or a planned production run established with this product, the system will recommend purchasing or recommend production. I'm going to create another order, and this time it's for customer 10,000. It's going to be for their home Dell address, and I'm going to go in and put in a customer's purchase order number, and they are going to be purchasing JLH042. And not by model, I'm just going to enter here the leather jacket, and I'll go out and open a matrix. And you'll notice that this is blocked from selling. It's in design mode, and this is blocked altogether. And you can see down here when I hover on the cell, that's blocked, and this is blocked from design. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sell two of these. You'll notice I can see what's my quantity on sales order, what's my quantity on purchase order, production order and three of these and one of these. So I've created an order 
for these items. Uh, at this point, I will release this order. Perhaps I want to find out for this customer, we can see that this order is going to be $954 of revenue to me, and it's going to be $1,192.50. Well, I need to know how much the freight is going to be. So I'm going to go in and choose to rate shop this order. And rate shopping, I've established a bunch of services from UPS. But as you can see, I have other FedEx, DHL, and, and just my own trucks established here. And I can see how much is the shipping going to cost this customer based on ground, next day air, next day air saver. That's assuming six boxes, six packages for 12 pounds. So I can go ahead and say, I can put this all in one box, function, update, and it calculates again. It's going to be $7.56. I'd have to establish the pre-pack or standard pack rule to tell it how many jackets I can fit per package, per box. I can establish COD charges. I can override the amounts. I can indicate that I want shipping insurance associated with this. I can also quote the rate and choose which shipping method this customer might want. I'm not going to add the rate or anything along those lines, but what I am going to do is I'm going to simulate that I've sent this order. And I've sent this email to the customer with the order confirmation. And now I'm going to go ahead and ship it. And I've printed a copy of a picking sheet in my warehouse. Now the warehouse receives that and it has a barcode on it representing this order number and the people have selected and picked the product put them into a package and now I'm going to go out in the warehouse so I'm in the warehouse and in the warehouse my main screen when I call up and start up our computer every day is this screen right here so they'll go ahead and put in the order number that we were just working on let's go in and just make sure I have a note of that. Order number 3127. Let's go into my warehouse. So back in my warehouse. They will scan that barcode, 3127, and the system says, okay, this is going to ship UPS ground. Uh, it's going to the Homedale, New Jersey, ship to destination for the Canon Fashion Store. Now they could scan individual items as an example and do I want to create a cross-reference no it tells me that item isn't found it doesn't know that part number um, if it's a different product it will tell me that item is not on order as an example but we already have this stuff packed so I'm just going to scan the outer carton label the the reason the system is telling me there's nothing to pack is I never allocated product so let's go back in to my sales order and there are a number of ways that I can allocate inventory one is the delivery worksheet and when I allocate product I can deliver or allocate delivery by item or by order and when I call up the delivery by item I can say functions generate my worksheet which will pull in all demand I can filter by delivery priority customer priority customer individually uh, by item and then I calculate with inventory and calculating with inventory goes through and allocates the products to ship when I've calculated and updated my quantities to ship I then let the system go through and I post and when I post my allocation routine the system will update my orders so that I then have quantities to ship in this example I'm going to have to manually allocate as I really don't have any products to calculate with inventory and you'll notice my quantity to ship is zero. So I'm just going to basically trick the system and I want to get this product out the door for the demonstration. So I'll autofill my quantity to ship. And now the system will allow me to go, go ahead and ship that product. So under shipping and receiving, pack line scanning, I'll go ahead and call up my order again, 3127, and I will pack all. And the system has now packed everything. It's calculating my net weight at 12 pounds based on standards established on those items and units of measure. Uh, the system can also read this off of a scale to catch unit of measure issues. Now I will do a closed container.
and it closes my package and calculates my shipping charge. And now I will post the order or scan a barcode command. If I just show you what those look like, these print out on labels. And the appropriate functions that are scanned, whether it's um, you know print the UCC 128 labels, or override the package value, or uh, rate shop my order to find the best way to ship, or set my prepacks, or view the items, or uh, zero my scale. These are all functions that are accessed, so no one has to go to a keyboard to type in any information. Uh, so let's scan the close order command, and the system now posts order 3127. It's now trying to access my email, and I'm going to say yes, go ahead, you're allowed to access my email. And this function can be eliminated so it doesn't stop and warn you, but I wanted to illustrate that it's going into Outlook and sending an email. Let's go into my Outlook, and let's go into my Outbox, and you'll see here that there is an email going to the contact. It's the shipment notification, and it's shipped from Cronus to Canon Fashion, and here's my tracking number and the total pieces that are going, and I can actually open the HTML version of my shipment confirmation. And here's my shipment document, what shipped, what products were packed, what's the UPS information. And I'll close back out of the HTML preview, and I'll close back out of Outlook. So I'm back on my Packline scanning screen. Let's go back in and go back into my order. Now, I selected in my setup options not to invoice when shipping. I want to have a final review of it. And you'll see here was order 3127. And you'll see it was my leather jacket. And you'll see my UPS charges now exist here. If I look at scrolling across, you'll see my quantity to ship has been put back to zero. And my quantity shipped was six, and it's ready to be invoiced. I also can look at the order shipment document. On my shipment, I can see here the products that were shipped out. And if I look at the shipment packages, I can see the tracking number the shipping charges, and if I look at the package card, I can see which individual products were shipped. I can see the weight of those products that were shipped out. I can see what my cost of shipping was and what the shipping charge was that I passed on to my customer. Other functions from a sales order that are highly functional for creating orders. Let's just go create one more order for Canon or 10,000. This one's going to their Dudley location, and they want a copy. They want the same items that were bought by the Home Dell office. Now, there's a number of ways I can do that. One is copy document, and I can copy a historical order, an archive. I can copy a posted invoice, a posted shipment. I can also just click sales history, and sales history shows me exactly what's on quote, what's on order, what were posted shipments that were posted, and I can see each individual item that was shipped out, and I can see the last version. These three styles were shipped out, to unit, two units, three units, and one. Let's copy that to my document, and you'll see that the system creates a matrix for those items. Then I just go in and put in my quantities that this customer wants. It can be very, very fast to go through and highlight items to create items, orders from history. So let's take a look at customer relationship management. The Microsoft Pebblestone solution offers robust CRM, and we can manage our contacts. We can manage profiles related to our contacts. We can look at the interactions, the profile, a campaign, a targeted segment opportunities related to those, and Outlook integration and synchronization. So let's just briefly go in and look at a contact. A contact record, here's the contact for Canon Fashion Stores, and let's look at the contact card. When I do a list, you'll see that the bold record illustrates the company, and then the people that work there, and their job responsibilities, business relationship, each of them have their own contact information. Let's look at Karch Karai. And Karch Karai, Olympic volleyball player, skilled, he likes football, mail, his communication, his phone numbers, fax numbers, segmentation, his business relation, 
his job responsibility. He's responsible for purchasing uh, the organizational level code. Let's go back to the company record. And when I look at the company for Canon, you'll notice that the profile is a little different. Low discount usage last year, medium discount usage this year. They're in the top 25% of my customers this year. Where did I get that information? Well, that answer reflects the state of this contact when I ran the update contact class batch job. And the system has profiles with various parameters built in to track and calculate based on the real data, the invoices, the payments that have been taken, and so forth, as well as manual answers, answers to a contact profile where I've gone through and let's say that this company now has 100 to 499. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this option and turn on this one. Now I've updated this profile and the system tells me when I updated that transaction. From a contact perspective, I can store their picture. I can look at statistics related to their purchases and transactions, opportunities related to this. I can look at opportunities and look at a graph associated with opportunities for this contact or for all contacts in the system and look by year and I can go back in time to look at the estimated value of opportunities and what is the actual value based on what I was able to convert or win or process and I can drill down into each of those and see opportunities and manage them effectively. I'm going to look at the contact interaction log and the interaction log is where I store all of the correspondence related to this contact. I can see their orders, their credit memos, quotations, other system documents, emails that have been sent to my exchange server that can automatically be logged. Let's look at order 3123, show. And you can see here a copy of this order. This is a sales order archive. And every time I generate documents, the system can go ahead and generate archives and store them. Uh, I can restore them into play. So if I've printed a quote, it will store here if I choose to log the interaction. Let's create a new interaction. Let's invite Canon to our golf event and describe the interaction. Well, and I can go ahead and record a book in here if I want to in the memo pad. And I'll push next. And when I choose next, the system's going to open the relevant attachment and mail merge in the data. So it brings in my company logo. It brings in uh, the address information, not only for my company, but also for my contact, whether this is a prospect or a customer. Please join me at the club for golf on the 18th and bring your check. And it's got my name in there as the salesperson of record. And I'll hit escape and close out of this. What the system's going to do is, do I want to import that? Yes, I do. And how do I want to send this information to Canon? Do I want to fax it? Do I want to print a hard copy or email? I want to email it. And it took place right now. And what's the direction of data flow? And finish. And the system's going to go ahead and generate an email. I'm going to allow access to Outlook again. It's generating email. And what it's generating, if I go ahead and click on this, the email subject sells some stuff and play golf. And if I drill down, you'll see it's embedded the HTML into this email, not sending the Word doc as an attachment so that whatever email type Canon has, they're going to be able to see that. And I will go back into Navision. And you'll see that the system has stored in my interaction log a copy of this transaction, illustrating for me that I have this interaction that took place. So all of your marketing activities your opportunities are stored in the Navision system. Let's just take a look at a segment. And if I look at marketing and I look at a segment, a segment can be constructed. Let's go ahead and let's find jacket customers and make sure that they're buying jackets, that I've talked to them, they're placing orders. So I'm going to go through and say functions, segment, add contact. And when I add contacts, I can filter based on data elements that exist in my contact table, on my profile questionnaires, even the ones that are automatically calculated, like my top 25% of customers, I want to send them a, a gift. People that are part of a mailing group, people that have a specific interaction log entry, people that have a certain job responsibility. Maybe I only want to 
attach this to purchasers and I don't want to send this to the guy at the freight dock. The business relation is just customers and I want to find here's where the real rubber hits the road. The value entries. Show me anyone that bought and I'll do a lookup and I want to find anyone that bought JLHO42 leather jacket. So anyone that bought this product and I'll push OK. And the system now inserts all of the contact people that are related to the companies that have purchased this product from me. Now as an example I can now refine that list and I can say go ahead and remove contacts, reduce the ones that uh, meet criteria or refine, keep the ones that have a certain criteria. So let's reduce anyone that has had any interactions with me since let's say 04, 01, 07 or later. So anyone that's had any correspondence with me since then, I don't want to bother them again. So let's remove them from the list. And this way the system will go through and make sure that I'm not, you know, hammering someone. Now what am I going to do with these people? Well, under interactions, I can go ahead and invite them all to the golf event, generate a telephone call to them or a to-do or an activity, send them a business letter make them part of a campaign and that will include them in perhaps a special offer or promotional discount on products that they purchase because they are part of this targeted segment. I can go ahead and export these as a file. I can generate attachments and mail merge uh, these records. I can make them part of a mailing group. I can go ahead and generate phone calls which will generate to-dos for my salespeople. How does that work? Well under my salespeople, I have the ability to establish for each person a Outlook integration rule and put in what is their user ID, what's their profile in Outlook, and what are, where are their contacts, their tasks in Outlook, and their calendared appointments store in Outlook. And under synchronization, I can tell the system which, which records to synchronize, when do you get notified based on other people modifying my contacts, tasks, or appointments. And then as these records are updated, they will be synchronized automatically through my Outlook as soon as I start in a vision. The Microsoft Office integration is extremely powerful and you've already seen uh, an example of an export out to Word and the integration, how you can work with Word, update the document, you can generate your invoices in Microsoft Word, you can generate reports that feed Word. You can do the same with Excel. We'll just take a brief look at an analysis view and I'll go to my general ledger and look at an analysis by dimension. And analysis by dimension allows me, for example, I can take data that's in the system and I can go ahead and drill into transactions that exist in the system. I can go ahead and take this information and copy it it's just probably the simplest way. I can click on the send to Excel function and the system will go ahead and if I assign a default style sheet the system will format this data and send it to Excel predefined into perhaps even a financial format. I can go ahead and generate and I can simply use the copy function go into Excel and paste this data then when I bring data out just wanted to illustrate that numbers are numbers when they're in Excel so you'll see how I have added up a list of all of the transactions that hit a specific GL account for a specific time period by just clicking and drilling into that data. When looking at this powerful integration the Navision solution can be integrated with Word, with Excel, with Microsoft Outlook and with tools for the web publication like SharePoint. This is an example of just the sales order entry screen and I've called up an order that I've entered for Canon and instead of printing the regular Navision report and generating HTML based email I'm going to use a hyperlink to send this to Microsoft Word using a linked style sheet with XML data. And here's a copy of this invoice sent out and as you see I've got the quantity of four pieces with a unit price of $100 and a total of $400 sent out 
as an XML document to Word. Another example of this transaction, I could simply send this data to Excel. And let's use an XSL style sheet and send this to Excel. The powerful function of sending this to Excel, it has formatted this data and the data on tabs, general, the invoicing tab, the shipping tab, the foreign trade tab, prepayments, customer info, and then my lines, the transactional data is fed onto multiple tabs within a worksheet or a workbook. And this data can be uh, copied and pasted, but this is a predefined format that can be used as the future of EDI communication. Another way that data is frequently brought to external tools and merged is like we did, saw previously with the mail merge generating a Word document from our relationship management system or utilizing our analysis views. And if I take a look at an example, here is an analysis report looking at sales in units and dollars to our various categories of customers. And I can export this data to Excel. I can bar graph it directly in the dynamic solution. And this export to Excel will simply construct a new workbook or update an existing workbook. And if I let it create a new workbook, it's simply going to publish this data out in a static format. The data fields, totals and such are not formulas but it is, they are numbers that are usable. I also have the ability to export analysis views. And here's an example of an analysis by dimension where I have my inventory items and I have my customer groups selected. I could have individual customers. I could have salespeople. And I can take this data and surely I can drill down into it. I can illustrate revenue, cost of goods, quantities, I'm going to pull revenues for the year and I'm going to export this data to Excel. And this export has constructed a pivot table. And I can then say, don't show me the blank records and don't show me the blank items. Now I'm only looking at records that have data, looking at the items that were transacted during the recommended time period in Excel. And the cool things about a pivot table are all of the data behind the pivot table is here and is drillable. I can also just click on the graph icon and construct a, a much nicer presentation where I can do anything. These could be monthly trends. This happens to be my large, medium, and small customers and the top 10 items that they're purchasing. And I'll close out of that view. Another example of Excel integration is from financial analysis views. And here's an example of a campaign analysis where I'm looking at the GL accounts and dates, 2008, 2009. Well, instead of looking at GL accounts, I want to look by, let's say, salesperson. And I want to now examine by sales rep, by territory. And I'm going to look for the year 2009 across all of the territories. And let's export this. And exporting to Excel, once again, produces a pivot table. And I can go ahead and graph that and change the format of this a bit. So it's a three-dimensional graph. And see where I'm making or losing money by salesperson by territory code. So the, the synchronization and the integration with outside tools is very powerful and very easy to use. Synchronization with Outlook, we can, we can synchronize basically any of the parameters that you would be interested in configuring to synchronize with your Navision solution, synchronizing various folders and connection components, to-dos, tasks, opportunities, uh, various components can be synchronized, and all of your contacts and calendared appointments. Uh, SharePoint portal can be used to publish various web parts, and there is basically every piece of data in the Navision system that you can publish to a SharePoint portal site. Business alerts and business notifications are automatic events or periodic events that can be triggered based on updating data, based on an inventory item falling below a certain quantity on hand, for example. Uh, we take this data 
and generate emails, generate reports to internal or external subscribers to those notifications. So let's just take a look at these types of events and the way that we construct and uh, attach those. And if I'm, I'll go into the purchase area, order processing, and we'll go to our business notification worksheet. Now, I don't have any business notifications on my worksheet currently, but let's just take a look at a few of them that are pre-configured uh, pre for you for demonstration and for you to build other, other alerts upon. If we look at the inventory status alert as an example, this one looks at inventory that has negative availability where order demand is greater than what's planned on purchase orders, production orders, and what's on hand in inventory. Constructing a negative available will create items and insert them into this notification. These can be set to run on an automatic business notification scheduler or based on any event that triggers something, a change to an order, a date trigger, uh, a quantity falling below zero. As soon as this happens, the system will, behind the scenes, go ahead and run our notification. And I'll run the inventory status notification manually. And you'll see it finds 109 lines. If I then drill down into those, these are all of the items that have fallen below you know, a quantity on hand or what have you. And you can go ahead and look and call up these items and illustrate the reasons why they are on notification uh, based on the item, based on the location, based on the variant or version, color, size, style that this item is now triggered on this notification. Then we can send to the business notification services from SQL which will go and feed reports or produce emails to the appropriate subscriber. Let's just look at some other business alerts that are built into Navision. Uh, inventory status alert is the one we just looked at. Notifications about upcoming deliveries to customers that have not yet been released to ship. Items that have not been received, they're late, and this is called item delay. Unconfirmed purchase orders. Two weeks before a purchase order is supposed to ship, we're supposed to receive a confirmation from the supplier and mark or update that as a release flag on the purchase order purchase orders reach their certain date, they haven't been confirmed, the system's going to alert us to those activities. Production order delay. Other examples of very popular ones are customers that have fallen below their credit limit or have past dues or customers that have not placed an order in a certain period of time. You haven't heard from them in three months, let's send an alert to the appropriate subscriber. So these can be very uh, powerful tools that you can configure yourself. Jet Reports is a report tool that is built on top of the very powerful tool many people have and use called Excel. This provides real-time reporting with drill down from Excel back into your Navision database. Let's just take a look at a few example Jet Reports. And I will close this report. Let's just open up Jet. And Jet Report incorporates a wizard to build your own reports that can be very simple. I'm just going to open some existing JET reports just to give you an example of the reports that you get as samples when you let's just open here's a sales top customer sales by rep and this is running for one year uh, one January 1st 2006 to March 31st 06 including only three customers it's connecting to a database called Jet Demo. And you can see here, it's pulling this data in real time. If I was to click on Jet Report, it will go and pull fresh data from the vision. And it's creating a graph illustrating for me these customers. And then each tab is constructed showing me for that time period all of the orders or invoice numbers, the posting date, and the individual inventory items that were shipped price, sales, cost, and profit. The graph on top of this dashboard illustrates for me their overall transaction cost and profit amount and customer 20,000 and 30,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one and let's just look at a financial analysis. Let's look at um, GL financial analysis and this is an example of we've got here departmental monthly trend 
taking a look at jobs, resources, material, retail sales, and other revenues for those three months. We're looking at a departmental income statement. Each of these values I can drill down and will take me to the source data in my live Navision database. Here's a departmental income statement uh, graphically, current month, month budget variance, three month profit trends. You can see which way my departmental gross profits are going uh, up in August and then down in September, quarterly profit trends, and a graphical statement of cash flow. Let's just take a look at another one of these reports. Inventories by units of measure, inventory receipts, sales dashboard, and here's a Jet Reports dashboard illustrating customer sales uh, with my top five customers for the date 2006, uh, all states, and you'll see here my various customers, total sales during this period, and a sales trend analysis. And then each page has separate, automatically generated for each customer, breaking out for me total costs and profit in just a different format, a different type of dashboard. So all of the data in the division system is available for construction using Jet Reports and pulling details out, average days to pay, my AP vendors, whether you want them fancy or just simple. Jet Reports is a very powerful tool that can construct reports in simply you know minutes for a, for a user to be trained on how to use this tool. Our web integration components, there are several components that make this possible. Navision incorporates the ability to produce XML data natively with no third-party tools, and there is a Navision application server component that allows you to connect multiple front ends to Navision, whether they are Palm devices running a client that is just ASP.NET portal pages. We can use the components to produce these types of screens using SharePoint and adding Navision's data as web parts, not just for viewing, but for real-time data entry, for adding customers, for processing orders. Business-to-business -to -business offerings and business-to-customer direct sales offerings exist, and there are several available for connecting Navision's data to your, to your end customers. The business to business and business to consumer solutions incorporate rapid application deployment where we can have turnkey web enablement up and running in two weeks or less. I was very pleased to present the Pebblestone Microsoft solution to everyone today and I would be happy to answer any questions you might have or set up more detailed presentations on any of these functional areas please feel free to get in touch with me. You can reach me at the email address cyoung at clientsfirst-us.com or call me at 732-970-1450. Thank you everyone for your time and attention and have a great day.